Professor John M. Rosenfield writes, Most of the major Chinese pilgrim reports dealing with northern India discusses a great stupa built by Kanishka outside Falushapulu, Purushapura, the modern Peshawar. Of all the pagodas of the western world, this was probably the grandest in the eyes of the Chinese, who reproduced both its name and form in their homeland, even at the time of Al-Biruni, 1000 AD. It was still a vivid memory. Huan San gives a detailed description of this stupa, while his predecessors Song Yun and Fazian also mention this historical monument. The legends about it are interesting. It is said that the Buddha had predicted that 400 years after his death, a king would erect a stupa to contain many relics of the Buddha's bones and flesh. At the stated time, Kanishka had ascended the throne and governed the whole of the subcontinent. While hunting a white hare in wild country, he met a shepherd boy. Building a small stupa of mud three feet high and repeating Buddha's prophecy. According to Fazian, the boy was Sakra in disguise. Kanishka ordered a stupa built around a small one in order to prove the power of his religious merit. But however high his stupa rose, the smaller one exceeded it by three feet. Kanishka's stupa eventually reached 750 feet and the older one was covered. The emperor then raised on top 25 discs of gilded copper on a staff and in the center of the stupa he placed a number of relics of the Buddha. When the work was completed, the small stupa came out of the larger one halfway up the southeast side. The great stupa was then cut down to its second story, whereupon the small one moved back to the center of the building. Kanishka realized that divine powers were greater than his and rebuilt it as before. The Buddha had predicted that after the stupa had seven times been burned down and seven times rebuilt, the religion itself would disappear. When Huan San visited Peshawar, it was the fourth time of its burning. Song Yun mentioned that it was destroyed four times by lightning and the carved wood was used throughout the roof. There is another Chinese version of the legend also. In a Khotani's fragment from Tun Huang, the story of the stupa building is repeated. It was built over a small mud structure here which was begun by four children. The four Lokapalas in disguise, they were the guardians of the four quarters. When the stupa was finished, Aswagosha, a religious advisor of Kanishka, made a ball of clay and said, If I am to realize the Bodhi in this present Bhadra Kalpa, by the casting of this ball, let some unparalleled sign appear. As soon as the ball was cast, a certain image of the Buddha appeared as great in thickness and length as was Sakyamuni. A Chinese source states that Kanishka himself placed a ball of clay on the stupa, praying that it might become an image of the Buddha, and an image at once appeared. Hoan San describes that there were two images of the Buddha on the east fence face of the tower covered by golden sand deposited there by ants in ancient times. Then there was a painted figure of the Buddha, 16 feet high, some 100 pieces southwest of the stupa, a standing figure of the Buddha in white stone, about 18 feet high, had spiritual powers and also emitted light. It once left its place to guard the area when Robert threatened it. There were hundreds of little stupas to the left and right of the great stupa. To the west was the monastery with double towers and connected terraces built by Kanishka. It was in disrepair in Huan Sain times, where Parshwa, Kanishka's advisor, had lived. Nearby was a building where Vasubandhu lived and prepared the Abhidharma Kosha Shastra. Such is the description supplied to us by Huan San, the Chinese pilgrim. Such descriptions made Sir Alexander Cunningham curious before 1875 who presumed that a pair of mounds outside the Ganj gate at Peshawar called Shajiki Dairy were the remains of the Kanishka stupa and monastery. But the site was correctly identified by Professor Alfred Foucher, the French archaeologist, during his archaeological exploration in Gandhara in 1895. It was attested by the excavation in 1908 carried out by Dr. Spooner 
curator Peshawar Museum who recovered the inscribed Kanishka casket from the main stupa. Besides this, some Gandhara sculptures in stone and stucco were also found. The relics which were recovered from the casket were presented by the government of India to the Burmese Buddhist who re-enshrined them at Mandalay and the celebrated Kanishka casket is the pride possession of the Peshawar Museum. The excavations revealed that this colossal monument was built on high podium whose total diameter was 286 feet, making it one of the largest stupas yet found in the subcontinent. It had a square plinth with four projections on each side, giving it a cruciform shape with curved projections at each corner of the square, there were probably stairways leading on to the four projecting wings and the lower courses of the plinth were decorated with stucco images. Nothing of the superstructure was found.